There's a couple other ways we can say hertz. Um, if it's 1,500 hertz, we could say 1.5K. Same thing with 3,150, 3.15. It's basic math, the same thing as, like I said, with the kilometer or the kilogram. Um, every once in a while you hear it, um, the British use it this way. They'll say 1K5, meaning 1,005. They'll leave the point out. Um, I did a lot of work with British bands, so I heard that early on. So if you ever hear it that way, that's, that's what they're referring to. They'll just leave the point out and put the K in where the point is. Let's call it 1K5, or 1K, or 3K15, representing the same thing. When it comes time for you to, uh, to get your hands on the graphic equalizer, sometimes you can't be where the equalizer is, so you'll have to explain to other people what you want them to do. You'll, you'll be on the stage or at the podium, and you'll be talking through the microphone and say, hey, can you please raise or lower a certain frequency for me? And uh, you'll explain it in terms like this. You know, take 315 or 3K5, or 3K15, whatever, and raise it or boost it, or, or it sounds bassy. It sounds, you know, bassy could be like 100 hertz. So you want to move the 100 hertz fader. Or if it sounds trebly, it could be 10,000 hertz or 10K. Um, at the end of this course, you'll have an understanding of what some of those frequencies are so you can convey them to other people and let them know how to change the sound. Like if something's too trebly or too bassy or too muddy or, or whatnot. And uh, this is just an explanation of what hertz are. Hertz is basically the same definition as frequency, um, but we don't call them frequencies. We call them hertz. Um, that's the term we use. And uh, oddly enough, or not oddly enough, it was created uh, by Heinrich Hertz. And uh, a little bit about him only because uh, I studied electronics and, and I love to know where things come from. You know, why do they call it this? You know, and things like that. So uh, Mr. Hertz over in Germany, he actually discovered radio waves. And radio waves look very similar to the little waves that we see here, except they're very, very high up, way past the human, human hearing. And because he had a total understanding of what frequency is throughout the spectrum, not just at the audio portion, but all the way up into uh, to the light frequencies, um, all his research um, gained him uh, or uh, made them name frequency after him. Now, uh, another important factor in understanding acoustics we know that sound has a frequency, has a curve to it, and uh, one thing we also need to understand is that it also has a speed. Um, you may hear of subsonic or supersonic aircraft that travel the speed of sound or above or below. Um, the speed of sound is approximately, and it says it in your book, and it gives you a little bit better definition in the book, approximately 1,130 feet per second. Now, it does vary per temperature, and it varies a little bit per humidity, and it varies a lot per the source that the sound is going through, meaning if it, the sound's going through water, which you don't think of that very often, but uh, like in a submarine that has a, a, I forget what that thing's called, sonar, where it sets out a, a, t a tone, and since it knows the exact speed of sound through salt water, it, when it hears the tone come back, you, you know the distance you are from the bottom. And you can also, when you send that tone out, and if you get a, just like a radar, you can get the, uh, You'll hear tones. Sometimes uh, they'll actually put headphones on and listen. Instead of letting the equipment do the calculation, they'll listen to see if they hear any early reflections, and which could be a different, another submarine or something else in the water. So understanding the speed of sound 
we don't need to worry about what the speed of sound is through water or through steel or through concrete, but uh, we do need to worry about the speed of sound through air, and that's approximately what it is. And I also just tacked on the speed of light. Light and sound have the exact same characteristics other than their speed. Um, they both reflect off of objects in the exact same manner. Um, they both are absorbed into objects in the exact same manner. The difference is the frequency. And we'll get into why and how sound gets ref is reflects and gets absorbed. As you can see here, this is uh, 1,000 feet per second, and this is 982 million feet per second. And I also... Uh, miles per second, about a quarter, fifth of a mile per second for sound, or about seven times around the Earth for light in one second. And electronics, the signal that travels through a microphone cable, the signal that travels through a phone wire, the signal that travels through anything electronic in your computer travels at the speed of light. Now, the fact that light goes around the Earth about seven times in a second, you think that, well, that's pretty darn fast. But uh, since I've worked in uh, the television industry, I realized that uh, you send a signal up 23,000 miles up into the sky and then back again, you get a delay, um, a satellite delay. So I understand. And then in, within the computer itself, you get a delay from one end of the circuit board to the other end of the circuit board. It may only be nine or eight inches, but because computers are so unbelievably fast, that time delay makes a difference. Um, we're not going to delve into the speed of light much, but uh, it's just nice to understand that uh, they work in the same way other than their speed. And then miles per hour, uh, a supersonic jet hits Mach 1, or the speed of sound, at a somewhere around 770 miles an hour. And that's where you hear the sonic boom. Um, again, these are generally at about 59 degrees is what the book states. Um, I like to throw in Celsius because everybody should learn the metric system. 